By now, everyone has a favorite line delivered by one of Leslie Nielsen's oblivious characters in his signature deadpan style. Who are you and how did you get in here? I'm a locksmith. And I'm a locksmith. When you watch a Nielsen movie, it's a war of attrition. If one joke fails, another immediately follows. And another. Then another. Till eventually your defenses are breached and you crack. You're excited. You should feel my nipples. And once you give in, the laughter continues. Nielsen gains the upper hand. And although you might find yourself asking, why am I laughing at this ridiculousness? You can't reason against the laughter. It's best you give in to the silly. Once you do, it's easier to appreciate Nielsen. And for him to come off that stupid, it requires a good deal of intelligence. To understand what made him special, it's best to take a look at his unique background. Leslie Nielsen was born in 1926 in Saskatchewan, Canada, to European immigrants. Nielsen's father, a constable in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, was abusive. Leslie took the first chance he could to leave the house, joining the Canadian Air Force at 17 during World War II. Fortunately, Nielsen never saw combat. This might have been due to the fact that he was legally deaf, which might also explain why Nielsen's future aloof characters usually exaggerated their attention while listening to others. After the military, Nielsen worked as a disc jockey, but quickly moved on to acting in theater after receiving a scholarship to the prestigious Neighborhood Playhouse School of Theater. After performing in summer theaters, narrating documentaries, doing commercials, and starring in several dramatic television programs, Nielsen got his major breakthrough with Michael Curtiz's musical, The Vagabond King. The film flopped, but it launched Nielsen's dramatic career as he followed up with a major role in the now classic science fiction picture, Forbidden Planet. Everything changed when after a prolific career in film and television, comedy trio Zucker, Abrams, and Zucker casted Nielsen in the supporting role of Dr. Rummick in 1980's Airplane. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Nielsen stole the show and established the persona that would define the second half of his career. Leslie's Dr. Rummick is oblivious to the comedic chaos around him, never winking, never aware of the jokes at hand. Nielsen more or less replicates this character as police officer Frank Drebin when the team behind Airplane cast him in the TV series Police Squad. Police Squad was short-lived, canceling after six episodes, but it reached cult status and widespread success when the show was adapted to film six years later in The Naked Gun from the files of Police Squad. Naked Gun and the two sequels that follow highlights Nielsen at his best. Frank Drebin is peak Nielsen, and maybe even film's most celebrated deadpan character. But how can Nielsen, the Canadian-born son of a constable who spent the majority of his life in dramatic roles, become the poster child for some of Hollywood's goofiest comedies? The answer lies in Nielsen's opening monologue of a Saturday Night Live episode from 1989. Everybody thinks I'm a comedian, but that's not quite true. A comedian is someone who says funny things. A comic is someone who says things funny. So I'm neither. I'm someone who says unfunny things. I say unfunny things in an unfunny way. This pretty much sums up Nielsen's career. Regardless of whether it comes off as serious or hilarious, Nielsen's performance remains the same. Most of the appeal of Nielsen's goofball persona erodes when he's trying to be funny. Take 1995's Dracula, dead and loving it. In it, Mel Brooks's direction of Nielsen is too heavy-handed. Most of the gags with Nielsen fall flat because Nielsen's Dracula is trying to be funny. The true marvel of Nielsen is when he deconstructs modern cinematic conventions by directly playing into them. When Nielsen's characters are as serious as the dramatic characters they satirize, he not only brings attention to the ridiculousness of the scene he's in, but also the silly action tropes that dominate Hollywood. Maybe this will refresh your memory. I don't know, it's still kind of hazy. How about this? Yeah, I remember him. I used to see him around. Why do you want to know? I can't tell you that. Well, maybe this will help. I really don't think I should. Yeah, you still don't think so? It's true that cinema has a long tradition of deadpan actors, most notable of which is the great stone face himself, Buster Keaton. But what makes Nielsen unique is not only his dual career, but his deconstruction of Hollywood filmmaking. And unlike many of the stony faces before him, Nielsen's comedy almost always relies on dialogue. Now 
Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. In many ways, Nielsen does to dialogue what comedic greats like Keaton did to visual comedy. Maybe this is why Roger Ebert called Leslie Nielsen the Olivier of spoofs. With as much ease, the theater-trained Nielsen could perform a Shakespearean soliloquy that could leave an audience in tears. Whether they were tears of grief or laughter wouldn't matter from the performance, just the context. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. American actress and singer Virginia O'Brien also makes use of the deadpan style while singing during a theatrical production of the film Meet the People. Even though it's said that this was initially a product of stage fright, O'Brien, like Nielsen, adapted this technique into some of her roles, bringing a unique comedic form to her performances. 